What for? Facial sabotage? Jenny? Problem? I want her fired today, now. Don't worry, Kath, it'll be all right. No, it won't be all right, Kath. Pack up your weapons of optical destruction and get out. You realise you're beginning to sound it. I mean it, Kath. Stay where you are, Kath. Jenny? Uh, this is not Jenny's decision, Jeremy. Or yours. It'll be all right. I'll talk to Bucks. Oh, good. You can tell him I'll return his wife's casserole dish at our dinner next week. Jenny. I'm sorry, Kath, you're going to have to leave. You're not letting it go to your head. She nearly blinded Ten me. Ten seconds, everybody. I thought we were part of a team these days. Things are better, Jeremy, you know that. Just stop being so high and mighty and do your job. Four, You'll have me fired three. too. Don't tempt me. Good evening, I'm Megan Wolf. And I'm Jeremy Dawes. Our main headlines tonight. The establishment strikes back. The World Council has agreed today to impose punitive sanctions on the people of this country. The sanctions, which are broad-ranging, include restrictions on the supply of oil and gas, food, clothing, and even some medicines. But how should we react? We ask the public. What are your reaction to the sanctions? Well, it's fucking outrageous. My mind needs insulin. Am I supposed to get a transition? What's the government doing about it? Hey? Uh. What's the government doing about it? Thanks, Patrick. Important stuff. Controversial Prime Minister Julia Salisbury attempted to assuage growing public concerns with the following official statement released earlier today. The international sanctions declared against this country today by the World Council remind us that now, more than ever, we need to come together as a team. Since coming to power, we have eradicated poverty and, as a consequence, seen crime fall to levels previously thought impossible. Our schools, hospitals and youth clubs are thriving and our transition centres have enabled many thousands to unburden their loved ones with dignity. In any sane world, we would be held up as a model to emulate. Evidently, this is not that world. The privileged few have lobbied and now they are striking back. But we will not cower before their tantrums. And we encourage other progressive nations of the world to continue to trade, visit, and share their cultures with ours. Do not be afraid. We have more things than we can count. We are a team. Now more than ever. And this team is on your side. Thank you. Reassuring stuff. But what do you, the public, think of our refreshingly different government? Robin Short found out. I was wondering if you could tell me what you think of the government. What? That shower of iridescent pricks? <laughs> Punishing success and rewarding laziness? They're taking this country down the bloody swanny. And it's not just me that thinks so. My wife mm -hmm. Iris, she agreed. A flawed day's night. Following the release of the Flard Master 5000, production of Flards are at an all-time high, requiring the new manufacturing facility in Grizzleford to move to 24-hour-a-day production. With people finding more and more uses for the ever-versatile Flard, the team at Rewington Cyst certainly have their hands full keeping up with demand. So, is there anything better than a handful of Flards? We ask Patrick to find out. Patrick? Could I ask you for your opinion of Flards? Of what, Pet? Uh, flards. What are they? You know, flards, like the... You know, well, flards, you know, everyone knows what flards are. Flards. Don't know. Don't care. <coughs> oh. Is it some sort of code? Are you OK? <coughs> A momentary lapse of reason? Commuters across the capital found themselves somewhat bemused by the latest stunt by a controversial protest group disrupt. In a baffling start to the day, commuters found performers outside every major station all dressed and posed identically. Whether we're supposed to be amused or intimidated is anybody's guess, Jeremy. But most commuters didn't even stop to notice. Well, as long as it's not some grand contemporary dance, it's probably harmless. 
But how do we all feel about Disrupt and their eclectic tactics? Robin found out. How do you feel about Disrupt? Ah, oh, well, now you're talking. Ruddy hero, showing us not to take it lying down like Iris here. <laughs> <laughs> so you both feel there are calls worth supporting? Well, Iris doesn't speak on mine, but we're pretty sure there's still one in there, aren't we, love? <laughs> Uh, wherever it is, it loves disrupt, fighting the Yorks for our freedom. And what could possibly be wrong with that? Do you need me to get you some help? <laughs> Build that wall. Divided doctors David Wong and Ingrid Sfors Borg and Hordensford today sent an intriguing blueprint to the service for a simple solution to their increasingly isolationist communities. In an accompanying statement, the pair reported that the current system of a dotted line painted on the floor has proven unreliable especially after a few drinks. But how should we feel about sending construction materials to this disparate community? Patrick Bannon again. So, do you think we should help with this whole wall thing? Absolutely! After all, we do all get on with our neighbours. But I am still glad that I have a high fence so I can play with Mr Barrington in privacy. Uh, is that your boyfriend? My vagina. Is that your boyfriend? My vagina. I am not a number. Applications finally opened today for the new advanced team membership cards, a scheme by the government to allow fast access to all the new public services being introduced daily. The team membership cards are entirely voluntary, but will be recognised as legal identification by all major organisations, including the police, banks and, thankfully, clubs and bars. And of course, there's no charge, Jeremy. It all seems too good to be true. Well, you've always been a cynic. But most importantly, what should you, the public, think about the new team membership cards? Team membership cards? Absolutely bloody not. That's the thin end of the wedge, isn't it, Iris? First it's, can I see your identification, sir? And then it's, would you mind bending over the table, sir? So Sergeant State Educated and Constable Regional Accent here can stick their truncheon up your dairy hair! Oh, crikey! They should call them what they are! They're bloody ID cards! Oh, for Christ's sake, what is it, Iris? Oh, I'm really not happy, Algernon! I'm so sorry, Algernon! Crikey! And finally tonight, Game of Two Halves, fresh out of rehab, repentant celebrity sportsman Johnny Hansley is promising to turn over a new leaf. In a surprisingly energetic appearance on the Whitney Chinwag show this morning, Johnny showed everyone he's certainly full of life and raring to go. If Bill and I try that on our sofas, I doubt they'll survive the frenzy. But what should we think of this exuberant behaviour? Patrick? Don't really care, love. Your thoughts there? Later tonight, in a break from our usual responsibilities, Jeremy will be taking popular rapper Jay Zuss to task over his street credibility. And then we'll both be meeting the team behind the new play that's got theatre critics buzzing with anticipation. That's all coming up on tonight's National, National Nightly News. News. Let's return to our main story. Time coming off advances popularity. And the honeymoon period pretty much over. The National Nightly News has spared no expense in bringing you the response to today's sanctions from across the continent. Joining us to help digest this shocking development are Prime Minister Peter Clement from his home in Lanfordshire. Good evening, Jeremy. And from Urkestan, Foreign Minister Ivan Vodovich. It's a great pleasure. Uh, Miss Wolf, you like... And from Svenland, Minister of Mojo, Vila. Hey, everybody. Minister Vodovich, your country pushed especially hard for these sanctions. Any regrets? My only regret is I was not able to see the face of my old friend Peter Clements when the results of the vote were announced. <laughs> As you say, he has one up in your bottoms. In Svenland, we try not to gloat, actually, because it's seen as really ugly and dangerous to some small creatures, yeah? Now, oh, don't worry, Minister. Ivan and I go way back. He's a wind-up merchant who can't pull up for shite. <laughs> Peter. He's just trying to get a rise out of me. You're like a man who load dissidents onto train to labor camp, not because of love of country, but to make up the size of his tiny penis. You know the vodka, Ivan? No more than you. 
I see you on election night with mouth like man thinks he's singing beautiful lullaby. But actually, he's squealing like a pig in hands of Randy Big Dick Farmer. Hey, actually, we to Enlandia. We aren't size obsessed. We value passion. Like the way we spoke up for Mr. Clement's country at the World Council. That's all well and good. And high and mighty, but where were you for the actual vote then? A finger in each other's fjords. Actually, that's kind of racist. And if you must know, I've had like a really tiring afternoon on my tongue. I've had a Prime Minister, with advances popularity on the wane... You don't uh, have to bring that up at every given opportunity, you know. <laughs> Peter is like man who thinks he's sniffing flowers in beautiful glade. But he's actually standing under outflow pipe from shit factory. At shit flushing time. On day of village festival of shit. <laughs> I tell him this at 19th hole. Minister Vodovich believes that left to their own devices, people will behave selfishly. It's nature of all beasts. However, in this country, we think our citizens are capable of being more than beasts. Pathetic idealism. Uh, Minister Björk, Svenland has long had radically different traditions and culture from the rest of the world, and yet it peacefully coexists. Why do you think that is? Well, you know, I think maybe the world sees us as something they can actually spiritually be enlightened to, yeah? Yeah, or maybe it's the orgy houses. Sometimes, when foreign dignitaries come to visit us, they're actually quite sceptical, actually, actually. So we take them on a visit to the Donka, 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 Donka district and show them what, like, a progressive, enlightened society looks like, yeah? Shit of bull. Spendham is like a woman who thinks she makes best cake in village hot baking contest. And then when she slices it open, it just full of piss and cum. Uh, uh, I... that's... well... That's just really gross, actually. <laughs> Spain is a teeny tiny country with population smaller than number of people. Peter Clements is sex with his teeny tiny penis. It's not all about size, actually. Yes, that's about what Peter Clements always claimed. I'm talking about population size. And I'm talking about Peter Clements' teeny tiny... Oh, fuck <laughs> off, Ivan! Oh, Prime Minister, please. Uh, it's so easy to sit on your pile of money and glow, in it, pal? You're a shite leader. A fucking god awful golfer, and quite frankly, as my old man used to say, you're a bit of a cunt. Prime Minister, please. It's you who is cunt. Minister Vodovich, please. Your people are fucking starving, pal. We will see how well fed your people are when the sanctions start to bite. Uh, you think your man like big scary wolf person terrorizing village when actually a pathetic goose person searching puddle for tiny dropped off pieces. Why are you so obsessed about small cocks, mate? In Finland, we believe like the size of your penis isn't as important as the love it contains, yeah. Oh fuck off, yeah. Okay, if everybody could just calm down. You're so smug on golf course. They are like man who fuck pig and somehow it give her birth to beautiful lady girl. Yeah. <laughs> but now you start to see, yes, yeah? eh? The people never happy. It never enough. It's certainly true that advances popularity. He's is... on the fucking wing. Yeah, let's go with this bollocks again. Shall we? Actually, you know, you know what? Nah, fuck this. I'm done with this. Uh, Prime Minister, please don't storm out. No, no. I have had enough of you, Mr. Jeremy Donaldson, than yes. Snide aside, you think you could make a better job of things, do ya? Because it's not that fucking easy, let me tell ya! Your channel is a fucking disgrace! You insinuate and edit against us and pick your headlines so people don't trust us. The sooner you roaring monsters are taken into public ownership, the happier everyone in this country will be! Well, um, we've not got long until the adverts, so... Um... I'm, 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 I'm sorry for the outburst, Miss Wolf. Julia thinks very highly of you, and I know you're not the one making the editorial decisions. Do any of you have anything you wish to add about the sanctions? My work here is done. <laughs> I like man who happy he lie down with fatty, drunk, easy girl from Village Inn, who discovered in morning he wake up next to beautiful news reporter lady. You know, I think it would be a terrible shame here if the people of your country were to suffer because of teenage grudges and personal rivalries, yeah. Thank you. Prime Minister? This country, this country, this wonderful, civilized 
creative, inventive country. We're not scared of these sanctions. There's no wolves at our door, only the best of people striving to help out. So no, Ivan, we're not afraid. In fact, I doubt we'll lose a wink of sleep because we're strong and we're well resourced and we don't back down to bullies. And on that note, we have to wrap up. Ministers, Prime Minister, thank you for joining us. We'll be back after these messages. One minute back. <laughs> Peter, you so easy. Uh, so many buttons to push. Piss off. <laughs> well, I see what grains this weekend. No, I've got meetings. Some tossers impose sanctions on the country. Well, shit. I mean, wow. So that happened. <laughs> Roaring monsters. Public ownership. You two are like a couple who think you are king and queen of village, but <laughs> actually you are just puppets on this string of evil shitty hand oh, yeah. puppet lady. <laughs> <laughs> Bow to foreign royalty. What? Should I just like curse? Honey, have they given you the Crown Prince report? What? Megan. This is Jeremy, and he'll be interviewing you. Oh. Yo, thanks for having me on your show, man. It's, it's quite all right. Yo, just a quick point. You're not going to ask me about the chimp, are you? Live in what? ten seconds. So he put that get up on himself. I'm just saying. <clears throat> Going in five, four. Three. Welcome back. I'm Megan Wolf. Welcome Later, back. we have an exclusive first look Later, at a theatrical sensation everyone's going to be talking about. But first, it's time to go over to the culture spot with lovely old Jeremy Donaldson, who's joined by a very special guest. Jeremy. Thanks, Megan. I have the honor and privilege of being joined by hip hop royalty. He's been called the son of the streets and the father of truth. Um, not sure how that works, but whatever. Let's welcome Jesus. Hi, uh, thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, it's a real honor to be here on your show, the news. You know, as a kid on the streets, I used to watch you for a window of the shop. So to be here right now is crazy. Mm -hmm. um, you've had quite the journey to be here today. Can you tell us about it? Well, you know, I try not to. Um, well, you know, the past is the past, and I don't like to dwell on it. But yeah, man, the streets is all I remember. Like, my mother donated me to a charity shop soon after I was born. Elderly lady took pity on me. You know, she let me sleep on a pile of crime fiction until I taught myself how to walk. Wow, that's uh, quite the childhood. And she died, like, died tragically. Right there in my arms, man. You know, I remember a tear falling as she laid there next to the used homeware. And in that moment, I became a child of the streets. I was just 18 months old. What a tale. What a tale. You're known for your direct and honest lyrics. Was your style informed by your troubled past? Well, like I said, I, uh, I try not to talk about it. It's just, um, it's just too hard. Of course. But my first album is about the story of the first four times I stole, so I wouldn't starve. A small group of infants came to see me as their de facto leader. They call me Mr. Cheese Slice. Anyway, we were like a family. So it would seem. Recently, you've been quite outspoken about the government. Yeah, fuck the government. Fuck advance. Fuck Peter Clement. What is it that you object to so vehemently? Well... You know, they stole from us. They're taking our money and spending it, man. Redistributing it. Actually, homelessness has been all but eliminated in the last couple of months. So? 
Surely that's a cause close to your heart? <clears throat> yeah, nah, of course, man, very much so. Yeah. I just mean, like, course, why do I have to pay for it, you know? Why do I have to pay you for don't. It, you know? People right. have been rehoused on property seized from the historically wealthy. Mm. And that couldn't have been you, could it? Look, yeah. I worked hard to be here. I built this from nothing. And I deserve to be rewarded for that. Would you say you worked harder than, say, a farmer or a care worker? I don't know. But if people are taking something from my music, choose to value it, buy it, who's to say I don't? And no one can take that away from me. Not even to help, say, vulnerable children? Mr. Jesus. What is it you're trying to say? I just don't understand where you've placed yourself I politically. I mean, is it ideological or is it tactical? Well, it's more of a... Or like maybe it's hereditary. Stop trying to tie me in knots for your words, Jeremy. I let the music speak for itself. I let the music and the people agree with me. Well, that remains to be seen. But you have given me a very easy segue out of a conversation that I promise you was much more painful for me than it was for you. So here he is with his hit song, Mrs. Lovelace Tears. Oh, no. Um, I'm going to do something a little different. It's a new single I've been working on. Oh, so this is uh, unapproved, is it? Yeah. You love it. Excellent. Don't worry, we've got a study of the art censorship system. What's the worst that could happen? So here he is with a new song. Aren't we lucky? It's Jesus! First, you're gonna pay all. You're gonna pay back. Well, we're all different races from many different places At any given moment, only one could be the greatest So you can feel elation from your participation Still two leaders in this motherfucking nation Now we're getting sanctioned, talking about expansion Why does Julie is require a massive fucking mansion? So fuck all your schemes, I don't need your freaky team And I don't need your help to achieve my fucking dreams So don't make a fuss when you find you're one of us Yeah, every single one of you's a bit Jesus And you can call me crazy, cause no one ever pays me But I won't waste a lifetime being motherfucking lazy I may be inventive, my taste may be expensive But why would I get out of bed with no fucking incentive Although it's contravention of your obvious intention I like to eat a little of the fruits in my invention You make us the same, but we're not all the same All our dreams, all our schemes, all our means are not the same the best of the praise of the press of the wave Cause we're only equal people when we're motherfucking slaves Take this fact, gonna stain it red Gonna slam it into Peter and Clemens motherfucking head Cause he's thick as shit, he's got a job, he's unthinkable It's time to spawn a puzzle with a motherfucking bitch for Say this is for the snuff ones, the push and the shove ones The folks that feel the burden of their motherfucking loved ones Ones who had plenty like a motherfucking Bentley The ones who now finding that their bank accounts are empty The ones with aspiration, who had to flee a nation The ones who built a business that had dreams of perspiration There's all sorts of people, the good and the evil It only takes a glance to see we're not all equal you make us the same, but we're not all the same All our dreams, all our schemes, all our means are not the same And the best of the praise of the press of the ways Cause we're only equal people when we're motherfucking slaves Gonna take this fact, gonna stay it red Gonna slam it into Peter Clemens' motherfucking head Cause he's thick as shit, he's got a job, he's unfit for Time to pull a castle with a motherfucking bitch for Get out of your seats, get your asses in the street Set a fire in the building, let him feel some fucking heat Take your hate to gold getters, the squilling bit getters, and burn them on the pyres of advances fucking letters. Gonna take this fact, gonna stain it red, gonna slam it into Peter Clemens motherfucking head. Cause he's big as shit, he's got a job, he's unfaithful. Time to pull the cars and rip the motherfucking bitch for. Chase that dream, you don't need a fucking team, and advances little dances on as harmless as it seems. Cause they're stale and corrupt, then you ain't. Jesus there with his new song. Jesus.
Thank you so much for joining us in the studio. That, I'm sorry. Um, I might not agree with you, but I'd just like to offer you an apology. I've just been told that there was some kind of issue upstairs and an attempt was made to censor some of your notes. What? Are you joking? i just like to say to you and everyone at home that this was a mistake. This is absolutely ridiculous. I cannot believe this. Here at the National Nightly News, we pride ourselves on remaining neutral, unbiased and independent of any outside interference. You have my word. We will never censor ideas. Back to you, Megan. <laughs> well, a bit of dangerous language there. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, thank you to little Jeremy Donaldson for providing our culture spot. Coming up, we'll be speaking to a couple of familiar faces about their upcoming dramatic outing. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this. That's the ads. Jenny, this is fucking outrageous. Just to remind you, it's a bit of a crazy ad. Last ad break. Now, if you come with me, I really do have to ask you to Oh, trust me. My father's going to hear about this. I understand. This is unbelievable, Megan. I don't know what you're talking about, Jeremy. Oh, here we go. Oh, no, I can't stop it. Look at him. If we could just get you in position. <laughs> oh, say no more. Say no more. Megan, Jeremy, you remember Mr. Algebra? Vividly. And Mr. Ooh. Harris, and this is Ms. Raiden. What? Philippa, please. They're back together again, eh? Who'd have thought it? Uh... Perhaps a lower order demon. Yes, it is awfully exciting, isn't it? <laughs> right, OK, then. We're going live in 10 seconds, opening on camera one. Right. Five, four, three. Welcome back. And no, you're not mistaken. Welcome Sitting across from us are some very familiar faces. <laughs> you really are too kind, Megan. It was only a yogurt really commercial, but I'm still proud of it. <laughs> Here to talk about his new show, we're joined by national treasure Tommy Harris, the national theatre's Philip Ray, and national deficit Jeff Algebra. It's so lovely to have you all. Um, Tommy, would you like to tell us about the show? You know what? I'd bloody love to. It's about me. It's about my life. And where did the idea come from? So, right, picture this. Um, their legs are kimbo, mid-session, sweat is pouring out of me like an immense hog. And then Cindy comes in, she says, she says, Pete's on the phone. That's Peter Clement, the Prime Minister. Yeah, yeah, Pete's actually a really good mate of mine. Oh, is he really? Yeah, yeah, no, he comes to the training sometimes. He's actually a pretty good goal speaker. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, Pete, he says, he says, Toby, can you... He thinks my name's Toby, see. He says, how would you like to spread your message of team spirit and cooperation across this fractured nation? How would you like to really make a difference in these desperate times? What did you say? Yeah, right, yeah. So, Jeff, the question on everyone's lips is, what in God's name are you doing here? Ah, well... After the success of my debut work uh, and all the people that I've touched, I knew that I had a, a career in theatre. Yeah? I've always been an admirer of Tommy from afar. So when my manager phoned and said that I'd been offered the gig as director, I was ecstatic. I whipped my trousers off and got straight to work. Why did you do that? I, I do all my best work with my trousers off. Yeah, I've been told that too. No, no, I wouldn't say so. Right, Tommy, um, sorry, would you just give us a sense of what the show is actually about? Uh, it's about how hard it's been for me and some of the struggles that I've faced. It, it like, really getting to the heart of how tough it is to be me. I call it Tommy Harris. Jesus, that was hard. Mm. Catchy. Uh, we actually have some clips of the process of the show. Um, would you mind telling us what's going on here? Yeah, so the show is, is, is built around uh, two things that are very important to me. Uh, it mixes scenes from my life uh, as well as epic fantasy retellings of scenes from my life. But Dad, you promised you'd come to my graduation. I'm sorry, son. You're an embarrassment. 
But Dad, you promised you'd come to my graduation. Back, demon! Back to the hells! Philippa, um, what's it been like co-starring with Tommy Harris? I've always dreamed of treading the boards at medium-scale regional theatres, Megan. And for once, this show really gives me something to sink my teeth into. What's different about this show, then? Tommy, uh, Mr. Harris's show really lets me show my tremendous range as an actor. I've always suffered from typecasting, forced to play the same tired characters in every god-awful yoghurt advert or god-forsaken soap opera or, god forbid, a pantomime. But, you know, this, this, this show has really let me just, just go there. Jeff, the viewers at home will be dying to know exactly what is it that you bring to the show. What is it? Oh, good question. Uh, I think these guys would agree with me when I say that it's my, uh, my steady hand on the tiller, my arm round the shoulder approach that's really brought the production from strength to strength. Absolutely right. Jeff's contributions are immeasurable. He was our rock. Can you give us a sneak peek of anything else that might be in the show? Yeah, all sorts, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. We've got lots of exclusive first-hand experiences of Tommy's time in the underground sports board scene. And some epic fantasy retellings of Tommy's time in the underground sports board scene. in saying this was officially commissioned by the government? Yeah, yeah, all, all paid for by the taxpayer, which, you know, to be honest, is actually a lifesaver, really. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that without Advance's support, we'd have had to cut the finale. Yeah. Which, frankly, would have been a travesty. Which, frankly, would have been a travesty. Oh, God, Jesus Christ! Oh! Goodness, you do this every night. Absolutely. It's a metaphor. For what? Death. And the public are footing the bill, are they? <laughs> Too bloody right they are. Between the cost of my tour bus and the dry cleaning of my ties, I'm barely scraping a profit here. Amazing. And where can the folks at home come and see this for themselves? We're performing all over the nation. And people can see it for absolutely free, all courtesy of Advance. Isn't that incredible, Jeremy? Yes. It's unbelievable. Yes. Well, thank you all so much for coming. Next time we see you, no doubt, you'll have taken our jobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's all we have time for tonight. Join us tomorrow when I'll be interviewing the world's most attractive horse. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. And I'm Megan Wolf. And from all of us here, have a peaceful night. That's the ads. Let's get reset for tomorrow, please. Hey, we must stop bumping into each other like this, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs>